Hello, this is part three of an introduction to LibreOffice Calc. In this part of the videos, we're going to look at how to graph in a spreadsheet. So you're going to be called upon to do graphing in a lot of different situations in this course and other courses and as you go on in your careers. And there are two common situations you'll encounter. One is where you're graphing data, which is measured values and would exist with discrete data points as opposed to graphing functions where you have some mathematical relation between two variables, and that'll usually exist at all values of the independent variable. There are discrete functions, but in the sciences and engineering, we're usually dealing with continuous functions. Because data only exists at discrete data points, you don't connect the points because those lines connecting them would be meaningless. But for functions, you generally believe that there are values everywhere in between the points you've actually plotted, and so you draw a continuous curve through. Before I talk about using a computer to graph, I will just talk in defense of graphing by hand for a moment. There are all kinds of situations where you want to be able to graph by hand, and it's not because of precision. Graphing with a computer will be far more precise. It's because knowing how to graph by hand involves understanding functions that you're graphing, and you really need to understand a variety of functions. So for example, you should have a relatively good idea of how a power function behaves, how radical functions behave, how sinusoids behave, exponentials and logarithmics, so that you should be able to quickly graph them by hand. And I don't mean generate a table of values and then plot them. I mean understand the patterns of the function, understand what the different parameters do so that you can see how as you change the values of the parameter, the function changes shape. But frequently what you need is precision, or you've got a function that's far too complicated to graph, or you're graphing data and you don't know whether there's actually a function underlying it, and then you want to do computer graphing. And there are lots of tools you can use. A few of them that are immediately accessible to you are Desmos, which is a website which you might already be familiar with. GeoGebra is a web app and a desktop app. It has both versions. It's also free and it's a little more powerful than Desmos. We're going to look at how to use a spreadsheet. If you want to shell out some money, Maple is very powerful. It has a bit of a steep learning curve, but learning to use it can be very useful to you. Desmos is best for functions. So is GeoGebra. A spreadsheet is best for data. You can graph functions in it, but it isn't as easy as graphing them in something like GeoGebra. Maple is better for functions, but it can handle data. Actually, Desmos and GeoGebra can handle data, but it's most definitely not what they're designed for, and they're not very good at it. So now let's see how to graph in a spreadsheet. I'm going to graph some functions. Graphing data would work exactly the same way. So I've set up a column where I've put some values that I'm calling x. So these are, let's say, our independent variable. And I'm going to graph x squared versus x and e to the x versus x. Now note, I did not enter all of these values of x in by hand. If you find yourself entering a lot of things into a spreadsheet by hand, you should probably stop and think about whether there's a better way. Here there's a pattern, and you can make the spreadsheet follow the pattern. I'm going to leave it to you to figure that out, because one of the things you're going to have to do in the lab is very similar, and there are several ways you can do it. But now I'm going to make a column of values of x squared. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to have it calculate x squared, and now I'm just going to fill that down so that it does it for every value of x that I've got in my column here. And now I'm going to do the same for e to the x. Something to be aware of is that in many spreadsheets, mathematical programs, and so on, the way you do exponentiation is exp, and it's a function. It takes an input, so I'll put parentheses, click what I want, and then close my parentheses. And now I'll just fill that down. So now I have stuff that I can plot. 
So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to plot x squared versus x. And to do that, I'm just going to select the whole column A and the whole column B. To do that, all I did was clicked and held on the A column and dragged over to the B column so that I've now selected those whole columns. And I'm going to insert a chart. In the sciences, almost any graph you will ever do is an XY scatter plot. Note that most of the other types of things that are options here really aren't graphs, they're charts, where the thing on the horizontal axis isn't really an axis, it's just a set of categories. An XY scatter plot is what we call it when there are axes, both with values on them. So you could get into doing a whole lot of other things here, but I'm just going to skip to the chart elements. I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to call it x and x squared on the axes. I'm going to display grids on both. I don't really care about the legend, so I'm going to make it go away. And I'm going to hit finish. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the exponential. But the thing is, if I select all, th if I do what I did before and click and drag, now I'm going to make a graph that has both x squared and e to the x on it. That, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not what I want. I just want to graph e to the x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the a column and then I'm going to hold control and click on the C column, and now I've just selected those two. And so once again, I'll insert a chart. One more thing. At the moment, it is graphing these as points. And these are functions, so really we should do continuous curves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this graph, so I'm now in the graph object. I can click the data and I can format the data series. And that has brought up this window for me. And I am going to choose a continuous line and I'm going to say no symbol. And now it's a continuous line. And I could do the same thing with the other one. 